I want to lay that out is I'm going to give you a little bit uh, of an about me, just a couple quick facts of who I am, what I like, um, tell you a little bit of what I did in university, again, to sort of lead the questions uh, and give you an example of, of a university path and, and some things that might trip uh, trip the most time of this whole presentation is the question period. Again, I'm here for you. Ask as many questions as you want. Ask anything, I'll answer it. Um, you know, if, if I wasn't willing to do that, I wouldn't be here. Did my IBBA degree from Schulich at York, uh, which is a it's a business degree. I majored in economics and finance. Uh, and in my time, I did some cool things. So I was part of the Schulich UBC, which is the Undergraduate Business Council. So I did student council for two years, um, which was a great experience. It gave me the opportunity to meet tons and tons of students. You know, Schulich's a small program as it is, but I was able to safely say that I met the entirety of my year, 400 people, and many of the years above and below me through my involvement on student council. How to connect with companies, what the process is of getting a job at one is, you know, I have I have that experience. And I didn't take the internship, why? Because I founded my own business, so this is where startups come. So last year I founded a startup with um, four of my other Schulich classmates, three who graduated with me, one who's still studying. Um, we were part of a global competition, again, I wanted to learn about social entrepreneurship and startups, so I threw myself into a competition. Um, Long story short, uh, we founded uh, a company called Reach Diagnostics doing diabetes management in urban slums. And so we're helping people living in urban slums with uh, controlling their diabetes because in places like that, it's a red big problem. Uh, so it took me to lots of different places. I lived in Boston for a couple months. I lived in India for a couple months. I got to go to China. Uh, lots of really awesome places. Um, <laughs> You stumped me on the second question. I think, actually, yes. I think um, one of the things that people coming into university um, don't really get is the importance of well-roundedness. Now, I'm going to throw out a caveat here. The caveat is, is that I, I come from a business school perspective. I went to business school. The idea of business school, at the end of the day, is, it is usually to get a job. It's, it's somewhat of a technical education. You know, there, there's the, the argument between do I learn for a job or do I learn to learn. Business school is definitely swayed towards the learn for a job category. Uh, so with that perspective in mind, I realize the importance of being well-rounded. What that means is, yeah, grades are important, uh, and I did well in you know, I did well in high school, I did well in university, and you know, I focused on grades, but it wasn't my 100% focus, because to an employer, somebody with an A-plus average and no experience is not as valuable as somebody with a B-plus average and awesome experience. And so the difficulty becomes a demanding university schedule, but also trying to get yourself involved in things that can give you relevant experience. So things like university clubs are really important. Uh, clubs tailored towards what you're interested in, getting involved in that. Those often can lead to internship offers. Internships, really important. So doing something in the summer and not just kind of wasting away. If you're taking courses, that's one thing. But instead of just wasting away in the summer, really important to go out and try to find experience to build your resume. Uh, obviously, you focus on business, but what, do you, what skills did you develop that are more interchangeable, maybe outside the field of business? Hmm. Uh, it's a good question. Um, and it's something that I tackle, or that, that has kind of kept me up at night uh, a little bit, because I feel like going to business school it's difficult to develop really hard skills. It's kind of a soft program. Um, so I was lucky enough to major in economics and finance and make that decision early. And so what that got me to do, or the skill that I developed from that, was problem solving. And I think that's a really, really important skill. Um, and so that's one that's definitely interchangeable. When I Actually, funnily enough, when I was at Flash Talk, um, one of our developers, like our coders, was a theoretical physicist, a PhD in theoretical physics, and he was a coder. And so when I asked him, 
how did that happen? Like, how did you go from theoretical physics to coding? He goes, really, they're not that different. I look at him like he's nuts. Like, yeah, they're really different. He goes, no, when you think about it, I was trained for 10 years to solve problems. That's what I'm good at. And I realized, you know, it was one of those light bulb moments. Like, yeah, I'm pretty good at solving problems too. Um, and so I think, you know, doing something a little bit more technical in university, economics and finance being a little bit more grounded in, in something concrete, got, gave me that transferable skill of problem solving. Because every company looks for somebody who can solve problems. Because everybody has problems and everybody needs solutions. Uh, another thing is soft skills. Uh, so the ability to get up in front of a class of people and talk, uh, and talk without you know fear or without um, uh, you know trepidation or anything like that. Uh, and I think that's something that actually business school teaches really well. Is they force you into so many of these presentations that you're running on autopilot, basically. Like I mean when I presented to, we presented to a panel that was like Bill Clinton, Sanjay Gupta from CNN, all these like heads of companies, heads of journalism, heads of state. And it was, for all of us, it was more or less autopilot. It was like, yeah, okay, it's just another audience. Uh, and that's something that business school teaches you because you're doing it all the time. Um, I think a, a third thing is teamwork. Um, again, business school teaches, a business school forces you to work in teams from day one. You know, there's very few individual essays, individual projects, and when they are, they're always supplemented by group presentations, group assignments. And what that teaches you is how to work with people that you might not like. I was in groups with people I didn't like. I was in groups with people who slacked off. But the reality is that in the working world, it happens all the time. There are people that overachieve, there are people that you don't like, there are people that slack off. It teaches you to deal with it and get what you need out of it. Um, now you say that and you're pretty centered on business. How did you come to that conclusion? When did you decide that business was for you? That's what you wanted? Uh, ha. Grade five. Here, actually, in this building. Um, we... What were we doing? We are doing... It might have actually been earlier. It was in this building, though, for sure, because I did junior kindergarten and grade 12 here. Um, I was, it might have actually been earlier than grade five, but we were doing show and tell, which is why I think it was earlier, because you don't really do that in grade five, that's a little old. But we were doing show and tell, and I don't know, I got up to present something, and it was very clear to both me and the teacher that I hadn't prepared anything. Like nothing. Like I just got. I, I must have forgot it was a Friday. You know, you know. I think about like Pokemon cards or something. Not thinking, of, <laughs> not thinking of you know show and tell. So, anyways, I got up and gave a presentation on like just something I knew. Like I, I'm a goalie in soccer, so like goalkeeping. And the teacher like called my bluff. But she came up to me after and she's like, "Okay, look, I know that you might have made this up, but that was an awesome presentation." And so she told me something. She told me, you could sell ice to Eskimos, right? Which means that like, you can sell things to people and you're, you're good at that sort of entrepreneurial side. And that kind of stuck with me for a long time. And you know, I kept it, it one of those things I kept in the back of my mind. And then when I, when I did a little bit of research into like in, in grade nine or 10 into what, you know, what I wanted to do, uh, again, I didn't do enough research, but when I did research, you know, that, came from the back of my mind to the forefront. And I said, yeah, well, that aligns with business. Um, and then I took economics in grade 11. I'm like, yeah, I really like this. This is awesome. Uh, but the mistake there was not actually then just going and doing undergrad uh, BS in economics um, and, and, and doing it. But you know, that got me to take accounting and international business here. I thought, yeah, these are really cool courses. This is something that I'm really like interested in and something that I can read about for days. And so yeah, I think it was it was a little bit of past knowledge coupled with actually sitting in the classroom and going, yeah, I could probably study this for four years. Whereas other topics I enjoyed, but I wasn't convinced that I could study them. Ah, okay. Um, so I had a very smart man tell me once that uh, no, really, he's a very smart man. Uh, <laughs> tell me that you know. It's not so much what you know, it's who you know. Um, and initially I was kind of skeptical about that, I'll be honest, because you, you, you go to a high school where 
very focused on academics. Um, you go to university where you know it's very focused on academics, and you think, yeah, you know, I want to know everything, and I have a passion for learning, and I love learning things. I'm always reading random things to learn something. So yeah, what you know is really important, but who you know is also really, really important. I'll tell you why. Because let's say that I needed to build a website, uh, and you know. I was starting a business and I had all these skills to start a business. You know, I can do the entrepreneurship thing, I can do the finances, I can do the marketing, I can do all that fun stuff. But I don't know how to make a website. So there's two things I can do. I can spend three months trying to make a website and learning how to do it and, and trying and failing and wasting a lot of time. Or if my buddy knows how to make them, which is true, actually, is actually the case. I can call them up and get the website made in a week. So from an efficiency standpoint, having a strong network of people with a diverse and varying amount of skills, super, super important. Don't let that take you away from learning a lot and trying to learn and trying to do things on your own, but being able to pick up the phone and call somebody with a skill set that you don't have. Networking, maintaining relationships, maintaining networks, super, super, super critical. Um, and it, it'll help in, in the craziest way. So here's an example. Uh, when we were doing uh, the project in India, we were running the business in India, we needed to create a training manual uh, for certain people that we were employing. Now, five of us from a business background, none of us really in health science or education, who the hell knows how to make a training manual? I don't know. None of us knew. So what we did, is we picked up the phone, and we called a friend who had done it before. We didn't pay long distance, we used Google Voice. Uh, great tool. Uh, and we asked them, hey, we've got all this information in sort of Microsoft Word format. Can you turn that into a training manual? And he's like, absolutely. I said, okay, great. How long will it take? Uh, it was Monday. Uh, give me by Thursday night, Friday morning. Great. So, Thursday night, Friday morning comes around. We've got a training manual. We employ it the Saturday, and our entire workforce is trained on the Sunday. If that was up to us to make a training manual, the five of us, we still wouldn't have one. <laughs> we would have a training one page, a training half a page. So, yeah. <laughs> The point, of, the point of that anecdote is absolutely your network, super, super, super important, um, but also make your skills available to other people. Maintain it, but maintain it and make sure it's a bilateral relationship.